Hi everyone, my name is Diagnose Dan, and today I'm back with another crazy story from my help desk. And this story will blow your mind. This is a story about a four year old EV that was nearly scrapped because of a single thread of wire. This case is on an electric van, a 2021 Citroën E Jumpy. The customer complained is that the car died while driving. It wouldn't move anymore and it wouldn't enter ready mode anymore. So the customer decided to get the vehicle towed to the Citroën dealership. When the vehicle arrived at the dealership, the dealership performed a code scan. The car was scanned with the OE scan tool and these are the three original codes that were found in the vehicle. Now you can see that the fault code description isn't very helpful, but in the next step, a guided test was performed and that test pointed towards an insulation fault in the high voltage drivetrain. For warranty reasons, technicians at a dealership have to follow a test plan. So that's exactly what the technician did. He walked through the test plan. The test plan asked the technician to do certain measurements. So he did and entered those values into the system. And at the end of the test plan, the system came up with a conclusion. The high voltage battery had to be replaced. So that's exactly what the technician did. He replaced the high voltage battery and fortunately for the customer, the battery was still under warranty. But you can probably guess it, absolutely nothing changed. The technician entered into the system that the high voltage battery was replaced and continued the test plan. Again, he walked through the test plan and again, the system came up with a conclusion. This time, it was the onboard charger that needed to be replaced. And luckily for the customer, the onboard charger was also still under warranty. The onboard charger was replaced with a new one, but you can probably guess it. The same three fault codes remained, the car wouldn't move, and the car still wouldn't enter ready mode. The dealership tech decided to continue the guided test, and this time the guided test pointed towards the inverter and the electric drive motor. Unfortunately, both were no longer covered under warranty, and it would cost the customer tens of thousands of euros to replace them. So the customer declined repairs and decided to take the van to an independent workshop. And this is the point where Morton gets involved. Morton is a diagnostic tech at Oestergaard's Autos in Denmark. He scans the car for fault codes using an aftermarket scan tool and he gets the same three fault codes. But this time, the aftermarket scan tool gives a much more helpful description, immediately pointing towards an insulation vault in the high voltage drivetrain. Morton is now faced with a challenge. The customer was so shocked by the quote of the dealership that he now demands that Morton makes him a quote of what it's gonna cost to fix the vehicle before investing any more time. Morton tells the customer this is impossible because he doesn't know what's wrong with the vehicle yet. Nevertheless, the customer insists. And the only thing that Morton has to go by is the report of the dealership. That report states that the inverter and the drive motor need to be replaced. To help the customer as much as possible, the workshop, the independent workshop, now makes a quote for replacing both the drive motor and the inverter with a second hand unit. Although this is a lot cheaper than using new units, the customer still thinks the van is not worth the money and declines repairs. Knowing this, the workshop now offers to buy the van off the customer as is to use for internal high voltage training. They agree on a price and the workshop buys the van. Over the next month, Morton and his colleagues try to find the insulation fault on this van as part of their internal training. This workshop is subscribed to DDTSB. And although at that time, we didn't have a specific bulletin for this fault code on this model yet, we did have a general bulletin that guides you through insulation faults. With the assistance and guidance of this bulletin, Morton started testing the high voltage components. In that bulletin, we also show a video on how to perform an insulation test on high voltage cables. In this video, I'll explain to you what a high voltage leak is, how to locate it, and I'll show you how to perform an insulation test on your high voltage components. Inspired by this video, Morton started testing the high voltage cables on this van. At some point, he ended up at the cable between the inverter and the onboard charger. He unplugged the connector at the onboard charger side and started doing an insulation test. And the test was pretty conclusive. The test failed both on the positive and negative side of that cable. 
Morton measured a loss of insulation both on the positive and negative side of that cable. One side of the cable was still attached to the inverter. And that led him to believe that the fault was within the inverter, just like the dealership stated in that report. Now, to understand why Morton thought it was a fault in the inverter, we have to understand that in that orange cable there is a black negative wire and a red positive wire. Measuring a loss of insulation on both terminals would indicate there was a short on both the negative cable and the positive cable, and that is highly unlikely. And that led Morton to believe the fault was within the inverter. At DDTSB, we got a lot of bulletins and a lot of experience on electric vehicles. So to confirm his findings and measurements and to exchange some thoughts, Morton decided to contact our help desk. And during that conversation, one of our specialists advised Morton to repeat the insulation test, but this time with both sides of the cable disconnected. So not just disconnected on the onboard charger side, but also disconnected on the inverter side. And this time, the outcome was different. This time, the insulation test failed on one side and passed on the other side. But what does this tell us? To understand what is going on, we decided to make a video using the exact same cable we are talking about in this video. Morton sent it to us. Now in this video, we can see when the cable is plugged into a component, in this case the onboard charger, we see a loss of insulation on both sides of the terminal, so both on the positive and on the negative side. When we unplug the cable from a component, we only have a short on one side and the other side tests good. The electronics on the circuit board inside the component form a path between the positive and negative side of the cable. The circuit board does have resistance. If you measure with a regular ohmmeter, you would measure a high resistance, but the resistance of the electronic components isn't high enough to pass an insulation test, and therefore you should always disconnect all the connectors before performing an insulation test. Now that Morton only measured a short circuit on one side of the cable, it was more likely that the fault was within the cable itself. So we asked Morton to send us the cable for inspection. And I've got a cool video for you of us testing that cable for loss of insulation. And you can actually hear that cable fail. You can hear the arcing of the short circuit when we're moving that cable. The cable is not connected to anything. The power is supplied by the insulation tester. At this point, it was pretty obvious that the high voltage cable was responsible for the insulation fault. The cable was only 130 euros and after it was replaced, the car drove like nothing ever happened. We sent the cable to our research department and what they found was mind blowing. When they opened up the cable, there was a single metal wire of the outer shield of the cable that was, if you moved it in a certain way, touching the negative terminal of the high voltage cable. In theory, if you had cut this wire or folded back like it was supposed to, the car would have been fixed. Now, this was clearly a manufacturer's error. And when we cross-referenced this case against thousands of other cases in Europe, we found out this was not the first time this happened. So we decided to make a bulletin and hopefully this bulletin can help workshops avoid making costly mistakes when dealing with the same issue. But this isn't where the story ends. Morton decided to call the previous owner and explain what the real issue with the van was. The customer couldn't believe his ears and Morton actually felt a bit sorry, so he made him an offer. If the customer paid for the repair of the high voltage cable, he could buy the van back for whatever he had paid for it. The customer couldn't believe what he was hearing but he happily accepted the offer and is still driving the van today without any issues. 
Now think about this, a four-year-old EV was nearly scrapped over a little metal wire that was touching the negative side of the high voltage cable. 20,000 euros of parts were already invested and they were about to invest another 20,000 in order to resolve the issue. The real issue was a cable that was only 130 euros. Let that sink in. We will upload the bulletin mentioned in this video in December 2025 along with hundreds of other new cases. We will upload them to our database that contains thousands and thousands of bulletins like this. If you're interested, go to diagnosedan.com, select DDTSB and learn how we can help you avoid making very costly mistakes.